you've helped uh, you know many people become millionaires i made a million dollar almost in a year then i made a million dollars in 6 months then i made a million dollars in 1 month and then i made a million dollars in 1 day welcome to the indian community podcast Today, we are honored to have a special guest whose life history is truly inspiring. From growing up in New Delhi to becoming a respected police officer in Canada and ultimately transforming into a real estate mogul, best-selling author and mentor, Sunil Tulsiani's journey is a testament to the power of determination and resilience. Whether you know him as the founder of Professional Investors Club or are hearing about him for the first time, you are in for a remarkable conversation. We'll explore his story, uncover his strategies for success, and learn how he's helping others achieve financial freedom. This episode is packed with wisdom and insights you don't want to miss. Welcome to the Indian Community Podcast, Mr. Sunil. So Sunilji, uh, for those who are not familiar with your story, could you share about your journey from your earlier life in Turlakabad in New Delhi uh, to becoming a police officer in Canada and now a a real estate expert and mentor. Awesome, thank you. Well, I'm very fortunate, first of all, to uh, be here on uh, your podcast. Uh, Also very fortunate in the last two and a half years uh, of being, uh, coming back and forth in India where my uh, interviews have been seen by probably two or three million uh, people in India. So I'm very fortunate to be doing the work that I've been doing in the United States, uh, Canada, and now uh, in India. And my story, uh, you know, is, it's, it's, it's mainly for the purposes of inspiration for somebody who is in India, who is in US, Canada, Europe, or anywhere in the world. And they're sitting there and they're saying, you know, I, I don't have resources. I, I don't have money. I don't have connections. I don't have experience. I don't have, and then fill in the blank. And I'll never be rich and all that. So when I was in India, actually, I was a very bad student and I hated going to school. And in, in the times that I went to go to school, if you, don't do, if you didn't do schoolwork or something like that, you actually got hit by a teacher uh, in Delhi. And... Um, and when, the, when, when I used to look outside the window thinking, teachers used to tell me, don't think, just do what we tell you to do. Just sit here, here's a curriculum, study this, and, and that's it. I, I didn't like it at all. In fact, my parents uh, thought that I was a, a not very smart uh, boy. They were actually uh, upset that their son is not doctor, engineer, lawyer, <laughs> Or some high class, you know, uh, other other post because they were always worried for me. So when I was in in New Delhi, India, I barely, uh, you know, passed. I used to, you know, not do anything, and then in the last moment, I would study really, really, really hard a day or two before and barely pass. <laughs> to the point where one day my father said, uh, you know, in Hindi, "Beta pass to ho gaya na." Like at least have you passed? Just tell me you have passed. That's all. We don't care about, you know, first or second or third. Doesn't matter. Did you pass? It it came to that point. So in 1981, uh, we migrated to uh, Toronto, Canada. I was 13 years old at that time. And the same thing happened in Toronto. I went to school. I didn't like it. But there was a different challenges. Different challenges were uh, in those days, in in the 80s, uh, early 80s, we as Indians, brown, uh, South Asians, uh, we were not looked upon as smart people. In fact, we were picked upon and my, our parents were picked upon. Our food was bad. The clothing we were wore were, was, was uh, not very good and all. So they used to make fun of us and all that. So that was another uh, you know, problem that I faced in school. But the biggest problem that I faced all my life was my parents telling me, if you don't study, you don't get good marks, you're not going to get a good job, and you're not going to amount to anything. That was basically the idea all my life. And I was worried all the time. And then one day, when I was about 15 years old, my, my uncle came to me and uh, said, you know, you should be a police officer. And I said, no, I don't want to be a police officer because, for, you know, I didn't have a good experience in Delhi with police officers when I was young. Didn't have a good experience. 
So, but then I realized the police department in Toronto was different, uh, completely different, actually, from what I heard. So from the age of 15, I knew the only thing I wanted to be was police officer, and that's all. And, and so what happened was I didn't do well until the last two years that counted to be a police officer. I just basically knew I have to get 75% in every subject, unless if I don't, then I'm not going to be you know, even able to apply. So luckily I became a police officer in 1990. Uh, I became a uniform officer, then I became a police detective, then I became a police negotiator, and finally I became a police commander. And that was a 15 years of journey. The interesting part about education, what I realized is that it's not that I don't like education. It's not that I don't like learning. It's not even that I don't like school. What I realized is I didn't like what they were teaching me in school. Mm, yeah, history, uh, you know, geography, science, uh, mathematics, the, you know, calculus, basic math, yes, English, yes, you know, you, the communication skills, yes, some of those things are very, very important. But when I became a police officer, I took many, many police investigative courses, and I got 80, 90 percent in them. So I realized that I'm actually good student for what I want, Get it. you know, and this is a good uh, uh, formula for parents today to see what their children want and fuel that fire for them. And they will find that the students or their, 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 their kids will do better if they are to do what they love. It's, it's the idea. And then in uh, 15 years, uh, almost 15 years in the policing, my wife, uh, came to me and said, uh, uh, you know, we don't, you don't spend time with us. You don't spend time with our children. You work outside, you work day, you not, work night and this and that. So we fought and finally she said, we're going to have a divorce if you don't quit the policing. So I had to say, what's more important, my family or my job? And 99.9% uh, .9 of my family, my friends, my parents, my uh, extended family, my police officer friends, and all, they said, get a divorce stay in the policing because even my parents said this is a secure job you know don't quit your job so 99.9 percent .9 of the people said that and there was a very small group of people who said you should not she should quit so i decided to do what most people probably would have not done which is i quit the police force and now i'm quitting the police force no skills no experience i'm talking about business no business experience, no skills, no connections, no, not too much money. I had some money mm -hmm. and uh, didn't know what to do. And that's when um, I knew I cannot be working for somebody when I quit. I have to go into business. And um, as they say, the rest, of the history, rest is history. And my good friend right now, his name is Robert Allen. Uh, he's in real estate. And I saw an ad. Uh, and it said, buy real estate with no money down. And uh, I said, what a BS is this? You know, <laughs> as a detective, I'm like, no, you need money. If you want to invest money in real estate, you have to have money. But he, his ad was so convincing that I went there, paid $5,000. I, I had never paid $20. I paid $5,000 <laughs> for a three-day uh, real estate event. And that real estate event, then I wrote uh, gold, said, I, Sunil Thosiani, will make $1 million dollars by the state, which is but one year. And uh, the media and my people, everybody now, most people know they ended up buying and selling 77 properties, making close to $980,000, almost a million dollars in one year for doing that. That's what got me famous. Now, I am a shy guy. I'm introvert. I'm shy. I never thought in millions of years that I was going to become a best-selling author, or international speaker and all that. So this story basically is for people who are shy or that don't have all the connections or even the education, or they've been told you're not going to amount to anything. You know, they've been told you're too short, you're too skinny, you're too dark, you know, which is everything that they told me when I was growing up. <laughs> right. It's a beautiful story, Samuel. I think uh, I, I love the, the fact that uh, you were able to challenge the status quo People said, stay in your job. Um, that's the best thing to do. Um, you know, get a divorce. I'm, I'm even surprised that uh, 
people prioritized uh, the job over over family in that sense so it it was it was bold uh, it was definitely um, i i think it was the best thing uh, to do because uh, you you turned out very well right so you 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 did hit that 1 million mark if i may say because you know although you were 20000 dollars short but i would say you 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 actually surpassed that right even getting that close I'm to that number surprised. I'm actually surprised that in, over time, I made a million dollar almost in a year. Then I made a million dollars in six months. Then I made a million dollars in one month, and then wow. I made a million dollars in one day. Yeah. Now, over the years, and then what's even more surprising, and I am so blessed, thankful to God, is that I have now helped people become millionaires and multimillionaires in Canada, United States, India. Recently, we have a couple of people in less than one year. I have two clients in less than one year who had made over one million dollars or eight or nine crores in one year with my coaching. So the 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 idea, okay, I I did it for me and my family and you know all that stuff. And and then I, by the way, I made money. And then later on, I lost money because you're always going to make mistakes and you're going to lose and come back. Because in schools, they taught me that if you make a mistake, that's wrong. But in real life, making a mistake is the way, to, the best way to learn. So, so what, what I'm trying to say to you is the blessings that I have is to be able to transfer this through me to you. Get it. You know, that's the main blessing. Excellent. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious... Uh, whether your experience with investigation and negotiation in the police force did that did that translate into uh, skills uh, in real estate? Absolutely. Um, you know, um, negotiations are very important uh, because we specialize in uh, discounted properties, cash flowing properties, and uh, every place, whether it's collaboration, what we're doing right now is form of a collaboration. Whether it's the collaboration partnerships, whether it's selling, uh, whether it's 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 letting people know about you, it, it, they're, they're, these these are skills, um, confidence, I mm -hmm. suppose, um, negotiation, as you said, as well as not being afraid to fall. You see, when I was a police officer, we would go into a situation where we could lose our life, um, and, and 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 so now when I go into a business situation where I can lose money or I can lose some days, it, it is in relatively, it's, it's not that scary. <laughs> so, so Nilji, uh, you, you touched upon investments and how you help people. So I, I'm assuming that's the professional investors club uh, that you have. Um, is, that, um, uh, is that the club that helps people? And what, what does it do? So, you know, for, for people like us who don't know what it is. Yeah, it's very simple. Uh, I've been doing it for almost now 18 years. Uh, and the club, the idea of, let's say you want to invest in real estate or any business, by the way, let's say you wanted to grow your podcast, you wanted to grow any business, really at the end of the day, you need a good deal. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're selling this, you're selling real estate, you need to be able to provide good product or service. In your case, you're providing service to people who are gonna watch this. So good product or service uh, with, with a good, let's say, guests on your shows. N number two, you need money. It's just, you know, let's say you wanted to say, uh, I wanna, uh, you know, 100X what I'm doing. You know, you wanted to do that and you needed some money to market and all that stuff. Same in real estate, if one person has a good deal the and but doesn't have the money, one of the easiest, simplest, and the fastest way is if you, let's say you're connected with me, you, let's say you're my friend, and I am a cash buyer. Let's say I have money, my friends have money, let's say. This person, just like a shark tank, this person has a deal, this person has the money, and they partner up together, okay? Mm -hmm. So good deals, good partnership. Then knowing how to do it, and then having a mentor who inspires you to do it. This is what Professional Investors Club is, basically. It's an elite real estate club where people pay $10,000 per year to be a member. And the idea there is to learn, but more importantly, idea, the difference between my club, my training, versus 99.99% of trainings all over the world is, 
we are a doing club. What's a doing club? We want people to do something. We don't want people to just buy tapes and books and yes, you buy those too, but you do it. And so when you have high profile people into this, into the group, then it's easier to do business because you build a relationship and it's easier for you to do business. And, and, and there's some coaching component of me directing people. Okay, you know, let's say, oh, how do I do this? Let's say you say to me, uh, you know, I want to buy properties in, you're from Atlanta, you said, right now? That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and I know Rahulji is in sort of yeah. Delhi area. Um, you know, you want to become wealthy in real estate in your area. You know, if you were to crack the code of, you know, becoming so powerful so that you get good deals and then you attract the investors, nothing can really stop you other than direction and coaching to say, okay, how do I put this deal together? How do I connect with high network individuals? How do I connect with people from USA, Canada, the NRIs, we call them, you know, however, how do you do that? This is what my, my club does. And that's what I have done um, in, in India recently for the last two and a half years when, you know, uh, Robin Sharma uh, and uh, Deepak Chopra, uh, Robert Kiyosaki from Rich Dad Poor Dad, all three of them we brought to India, actually, with uh, thousands of people in the room and changing thousands of... I, I get messages from, every, from, from all over the world saying how this gets them to inspire students, including to do something about their life. Absolutely. Great. great. So uh, you've helped, uh, you know, many people become millionaires. What is the key quality you see in those who succeed with your guidance? Very good point. Um, number one uh, is you need to know where you're going, meaning mm -hmm. what's your goal. A lot of people tell me I want to be rich or I want karodpati. What's karodpati? Is it one? Is it two? Is it ten? So, so write a goal with the exact amount, with the exact date, just like what I did. In uh, you know, that by this day I will do that. So, for example, you can say, you know, um, I Rahul Mehra uh, will make ten crore rupees by December thirty first, twenty twenty five, as an example. OK, so that goal and then put that goal in front of you all over the place, everywhere. What I did was I made 22, I, I made 18 copies and I put it all over my home, my fridge, my, 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 my mirror, where I worked out, where I went, everywhere. So it doesn't matter where I turned, that goal was right there in my face, reminding me to do that. So that's number one, having a goal. Just like if you say, I want to go to travel, you say, I say, where? You say Paris. OK, then now you have to buy a ticket to Paris. If you say, I want to go anywhere, then you don't know where you're going. So number one, knowing what, uh, number two, um, go and learn and meet people in that industry. It's pretty simple. And how do you do that? There's always going to be associations and expo exhibitions or trainings all over India, Canada, USA, whatever, wherever the people are hanging out, you go there. So th these, th 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 you're going to find authors, you're going to find speakers trainers you're going to find people who are doing well right now go there why first go there to meet people in the air in in that group secondly learn from this from the stage not learn from the stage first and then meet the people no meet the go there to meet people then learn from that because that is where the business is being done so that's number two go there consistently you become who you hang out with it's as simple as that so number three uh, for, for those uh, millionaires and multi-millionaires, they understood that whether you have lots of money, whether you have little money or you have no money, you cannot use that as an excuse for failure. I mean, you cannot say what we have heard all our life, which is money makes money. Now, it should say money can make money. It should, if you have money, it makes it easier. But the the idea when they say money makes money is that if you have money, only you will make money. If you have no money, you're doomed. You're not going to make money. This is the idea. So throw that out idea that if I have no, because I have millionaires and multimillionaires, even like single mothers, part time, elderly people young, becoming multimillionaires when they had really no money. And that is what is so important to understand. So, so know that you can do it, no excuses. The, the, the fourth part is learning. Actually learning 
the, the craft of real estate. You can read books, you can attend events, you can have a mentor, you can learn from some, learn something, just like if you're going to become a, a doctor, you can learn about real estate investing, in, uh, you know, you don't, need, by the way, learn, becoming a doctor is 100 times uh, tougher than learning in real estate. So, but learn about it. Don't be like, okay, I'm just going to go buy a flat and one day flat is going to go up in the value and then I make money. Everybody knows that. Let's learn beyond that. Let's learn more beyond that. Um, so, so that's it. And then, and um, the next thing is have a mentor. All of them, all of them had one thing in, in common was they were humble enough. Doesn't matter what stage they were. They're like, I want this person. He has done more than me in this area. I want him as my mentor. And then doing what they what they did doing not just learning but doing and that's basically a basic way what what the traits are needed for people to do it's just take the first step take 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 action with what i just said at the end of the day thank you so if i may summarize you you have a goal uh, you you take action you you start learning and then um, you know you 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 go to the ocean where the other fish are you know you learn from them of course, and then you're also um, finding yourself a mentor, right? Uh, a guru in 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 India. That's how we would say there there is a guru, and you trust the guru, right? So yeah, you, you, yeah. The guru. You find and trust the guru that has done what you want to do. Um, it, Ten thousand years ago, when I wanted to become a warrior, I look at one warrior and I said, I want to be like that person, right? Okay. I want to be like. That Person. then you say okay tell me what to do you want me to wake up at 5 a.m i will wake up at 5 a.m you want me to go like this i will go like this you know and just follow that one person as your guru as your mentor as your coach and by the way all over the world many 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 gurus and and, and trainers and coaches and mentors have different ideas about how to be successful but i would say 99.99999 percent of them agree if you go back 10,000 years of millions of people, and that is this, you must find a guru who has done what you want to do and do follow them. And that's the fastest way of doing it. Absolutely. And so looking back, um, I'm sure you would have faced hundreds of challenges. Was there one which made you really concerned, have a really strong feeling of self-doubt? And then how did you overcome that? Because, you know, we, we, we as, as a business uh, owner or a, as an entrepreneur, you, you see uh, hundreds of challenges every day. But there must be some which make you feel, oh, okay, I can't do this. And this is, this is uh, too complex for me. Uh, you know, you, you start doubting yourself. So you would have come across something like that. And how did you overcome that? Well, let's uh, see. The sexy story is in 2005 to 2008, we generated millions of dollars. And then the market crashed in the United mm -hmm. States in 2008 uh, okay. to the point where they crashed 70, 80 percent. It, it was crazy. The biggest crash since depression in the United States, which also had impact all over the world. But U.S. has the, had the worst, it was leading in that category. So we lost everything. Because a lot of financing was coming from there, we promoted an event, uh, a project with a builder, and then that project went down. Now, when the project goes down, people put deposit and they lose the deposit because the project went down. That was a big challenge. So not only did we lose money, but we also lost uh, some rep uh, lots of reputation as to you know they thought that I did that you know, but it happened because of the market and the, and the builder just ran basically just ran. Um, so that challenge was the biggest challenge for me because I thought, you know, just like school, just never make mistakes, just keep going up and never fall. You know, if you fall, then you feel like failure. And uh, so what I did was when I failed, uh, when you lose money, when you have a, a company, you have to pay your employees and your cash flow stops and you're, you have a big house and, and, and then you have to pay for that. All of a sudden, it's very, very tough financially, mentally, physically, and also reputation-wise when people 
uh, they say, oh, where's my money? And the well, so you gave the money to the builder, not to me, <laughs> per se. And I also gave the money to the builder and I lost money. So, so that challenge was the toughest of in, from a business point of view. And, and I went and hired several mentors. And I said, I hired a lawyer from a legal point of view as a mentor. I said, I'm just going to pay you for two hours. You just give me advice. Not like, you know, this is a situation I'm in. What do I do? Then I hired a life coach and I said, look, I'm facing this because when you do this, your family also doubts you. And then what happens is my parents and my friends said, see, we told you, don't quit the job. Look what you did. You quit job. Now, you know, we're telling we were right. You were wrong. And uh, they got to say that and, uh, you know, and say, if you were a police officer, you still would have been making money. You still had a position. You still blah, 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 blah. So I hired a life coach and then I hired a business coach. So I had three <clears throat> people. The, the lawyer was a temporary one, meaning whenever I need him, just pay him and that's it. So that was a very temporary one. The other two were six months. And then basically... I, the advice that I got from the coach, life coach, I got lots of them, but let's, let, just to give you one, is self-care. He said, just take care of yourself. Don't uh, read news. Don't consume anything negative. Don't talk negative. Don't listen to negative people. Don't read anything negative. Just go and do something that's important. So I said, what should I do? He said, well, is there something that you like to do? They said, you would like, do you like to work out? I said, no, I don't like to work out. But I do work out, but I don't like it. I do it because I know it's good for me, but that's it. He said, what else? I said, well, um, you know, he said, long story short, he, he introduced me to squash. Because in Canada, it's cold and warm, you know. And so he said, you can do squash 20, uh, 12 months a day. Uh, 12 months a year so there you know why don't you start squash i had not I'd, I'd never played squash so i went and i found a friend who was now now we went and i got hooked onto squash and all these problems were coming and i would say you know what seven o'clock i have to go play squash. that's it <laughs> and for two hours i would forget everything nice. uh, and he said what else do you like to do i said i like, like watching movies he goes do you like watching movies in theater i said yes he said, do you go often? I said, no. He said, well, now you start going uh, to a movie uh, once a week until I tell you not to go. This, <laughs> so, so I said, <laughs> I said, okay. So okay. I started, you know, the good thing about uh, here is that you have Hollywood and Bollywood movies, both movies that you can watch. And so there is enough movies. And, and I liked watching movies. Uh, and, and sometimes I went to the movies by myself. And sometimes I went with other people. So... That was the advice from a life coach. Take care of yourself and, 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 and know that it will work out. Just know. Just trust. It will work out. It took me six months. But you know what happened? I was thinking, how am I going to pay? I have a bill due in three days. And then you know what happened? In two days, something would happen. Money would come. And then that got paid. Okay, good. Something will happen you know, in the right time. Then a business coach basically helped me with my strategy of um, marketing, sales, uh, how to add value. And he said one thing that was the most important part about business, and that is this. Forget about you. Focus on your clients and focus on adding value to people. Focus on doing things for people where they don't even pay you. Focus on helping people. Focus on donating, knowing that they'll never know that you did it. Focus on people who come in since you have more time now and they cannot pay your fee they cannot just focus on helping them and if they never buy anything from you uh they just got value from you then um then so be it just focus on giving value to somebody outside other than you and that was the biggest uh takeaway from a business point of view we are here on this planet from above through God to do God's work. And you can do God's work by planting trees. You can do God work, God's work by helping people become rich. You can do God's work by doing what you guys are doing, by you know inspiring people to become successful, wealthy, and whatever it is. And that's what I did. So it, it took almost a year to come out of that by taking the focus from a business point of view from me 
to other people and then focusing from a life point of view on me to say, I need to be healthy. I need to have a positive energy and that's it. That's a remarkable story, Sunil. And I'll tell you, uh, one of our la- you know, previous guests, Poonam Kaul, um, she uh, used to be the uh, CMO for Apple India. And uh, she actually uh, quit her job and got into filmmaking. And she makes movies about, um, you know, the ills of the society, right? So she, she made a movie about widows and she made a movie, a recent movie about uh, uh, how the girl child was impacted by the pandemic, right? And uh, a lot of uh, girl children uh, were dropped out of school uh, due to the pandemic and and they never went back, right? Uh, Even after the pandemic. So she was also sharing a similar story where uh, she now got into making movies and she had no background about movies. And she's like, every other day we would be, you know, finding ourselves in a position, okay, now we have to do this, ab camera lena, ab ye karna, you know, how do we do that? And somehow, you know, there would be help coming in and, you know, help would pour in and she would make it happen, right? So she she signed up people like Nina Gupta, uh, Shabana Azmi, you know, Vikas Khanna for her movies. And, um, you know, things actually f- fell in place. And what we were talking about it at that time was uh, that when your intent is pure, right, that's when God conspires to make it happen, right? So we, we, we thought this is... This is a very different take from uh, the Paulo uh, Coelho, uh, you know, uh, quote. We we thought this, and I'm seeing the same uh, <laughs> uh, sort of a story with you as well. Well, you know, uh, the main thing is also to remember that you have to know and see it and believe it that it will turn out to for your benefit okay. and the benefit of the world. It will happen, not doubted, maybe this and that, but just I knew even if uh, you're down, it's good for me. That's the biggest belief. And when you have that belief, like you said, even God will say, you know, we, you know, he believes it. So we have to do it. And that's the because, you know, there's a law of attraction. You, I'm sure you heard of it. And there's a you know different take on that. But law of attraction basically said you become what you think about all the time. That's basically the, the, the summary of that. And, and and when I go all over the world, I mean, you, you know, people have seen uh, me probably sharing stages with Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Robin Sharma, Deepak Chopra, Abhishek Bachchan in India, Sonu Sooth, and some of the big Bollywood people, Hollywood uh, people. And the idea here is whether you're in business or real estate. And real estate, by the way, is business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a... It's a product. Real estate is a product of a business. So, so at the end of the day, I specialized in business. But now I also specialize in helping people become best-selling authors and speakers, growing their businesses and uh, monetizing their businesses. You see, a lot of people have businesses. They're working really hard, but they're not making the amount of money that, that they should be making. So I have become expert at a monetization expert from that point of view. Uh, as well. And um, and as I said, before we started, uh, I'm very fortunate that I'm coming to for my speaking tour. Actually, I'm going to um, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia on uh, 19th of September. And then 22nd of September, I'm coming to Mumbai for my event. And then later on, I'm coming for my real estate event in Delhi on October 6th. So idea there is whether in your you're in real estate, whether you're in business, whether you're in a business of real estate or you're just any other business, come to these events because you surround yourself with the right people, people who will inspire you, and you take away one idea. One idea can change everything. That's number one. Number two, one center of influence, one friend, one successful mentor can change your life like that. And where do they hang out? Do they hang out in bars? Do they hang out on the streets? Do they no? They hang out at these places. So, I would love to see some of you actually um, at the events. Uh, hopefully, we can put a link there as well. Absolutely. So we'll we'll put up the links to your events, the upcoming events, not just uh, on this video, but also on the Indian Community website. So we don't just do the podcast. We also have a website called Indian Community, uh, where we uh, put in information about 
these upcoming events and uh, you know indian origin businesses so there's a lot of content up there uh, for people um so milsa you spoke about so many mentors in your life right uh, in the the role that they have played uh, you you've taken so many names now who are the mentors that you always think of and the key message right so we want to keep it uh, i know we are going to be pressed for time now um, so we will keep it uh, short but uh, who are the key mentors and those words that never go out of mind right so they are always uh, you know as part of your uh, breath yes um i would say many years ago not knowing i wrote a list of people that i consider to be my mentors and what i said is i want them for my men- as mentors but i want to do business i want to collaborate i want to partner up with my mentors that's the highest level of success and i wrote a list you know tony robbins grant cardone uh, robert kiyosaki from rich dad poor dad and deepak so deepak chopra and all these people all i did was i read their books i didn't know how i'm going to do it i just wrote a list somebody said i even wrote like amitabh bachchan and i wrote all these people i didn't know if i was gonna... but the great news is in the ninth, last 18 years when i wrote that list is that 90% of that has come true and um i would say um robert allen uh, who was the gentleman that got me into real estate investing is a good friend and a mentor and now he considers me as his mentor uh brian tracy jack canfield and uh and and um deep dr deepak chopra from uh, usa as well uh robin sharma uh, i consider to him as a good friend and a mentor and uh i've shared stages with tony robbins and some of these people bottom line at the end of the day is you have to do what you need to do today what does that means if you want to be successful and i got this formula from collective wisdom what is the what is success and basically the success is if today i was supposed to have interview with you today i was supposed to do this today i was supposed to contact five people today i was supposed to do this and i have a list that in my calendar today i was supposed to do this and i did that i'm success today tomorrow what i'm supposed to do i did that i'm successful day after that so every day do what you need to do to go from where you are to where you want to go so if you know you want to write a book you say okay i'm going to write uh 10 pages every day so you write 10 pages and then one day you say am i going th- that direction no i'm not going that di- then you're not successful if you said i'm going to uh make 10 calls or i'm going to attend events or i'm going to do this and you don't do it that day because you're tired or you you have other things to do then that day you're unsuccessful so success is not a destination it's mm-hmm. it's a it's it's a trip you you it's go on a successful trip and every day is the experience of success that makes you successful and become all of them these mentors have told me become so rich so wealthy that you never have to worry about money that you never think about oh i want to do this the first thing that used to come to my mind and millions of people that i've dealt with is is too expensive or i can't afford it or whatever you should get to a point decide how much money do i need where if your wife comes to you and says i want that or we want to go on a trip your ki- children comes to you and say i want to go to this university or i want to do this or i want to buy you know this whatever it is that you need for you you should not make a decision based on i don't have money make a decision on do i need it is it something i want need blah blah, blah. that's different but the first thought should never be i don't have the money so this is what i learned i used to think when i was growing up becoming rich was like golly like it's a bad thing you know rich people are bad poor people are good that's what i was taught right okay. but from these mentors what i understood which was so powerful when you become really wealthy when you become really rich you can actually become you can actually help the world better than if you're not rich mm-hmm. right number 2 you're selfish if you don't become rich not selfish if you become rich i was taught if you're you're selfish if you make too much money because you're taking away from some other people 
But you're selfish, you don't become rich. Why? Because now if you're a good person, you can help other, inspire other. You can even donate people for donate. We have done recently 500 eye operations in Bhopal, India. You know, wow. and we were the financing people, right? Obviously, there's other volunteers who did that. But without money, it wouldn't have happened. So maybe you have a goal of helping building schools, libraries, and helping some, some sort of a cause. It won't happen without money. And money is very very important absolutely um, speaking about money it's also important to safeguard this money right and um, we hear a lot of nris complaints so we we've had some guests on our podcast previously uh, who are of indian origin and we're complaining about uh, their investments especially real estate investments overseas <clears throat> and uh, uh, how it was challenging for them to manage those investments uh, especially their portfolio while they're not in the same city or you know they're they're far away um, i'm sure you you encounter this uh, yourselves as well uh, so how do you recommend uh, investors uh, in in such situations good good very good point because being in canada i also uh, in the past have invested in india i have invested in uh, united states and you know different parts of the world uh, and and that challenge is there. And one of the things why I have become really uh, explosive, uh, you know, I'm blessed to be well known now in, in India to some degree, is because the idea of real estate is not location, location, location. People say, oh, real estate, you want to be successful? Location, location, location. Number one. No, it's number two. Number one is relationships, relationships, relationships. So here's what you do. If you are thinking of investing in, in India or, or any other country outside of, your, outside of your country, number one thing you must spend lots of time is to get to know the people, the builder, the partners or anybody on ground, whether they're good human beings or not. That's the number one thing you have to do. And, and, and do not blindly look at an ad and, and, and then see a beautiful colored brochures and then somebody calls them up and then they look good and then they say bye and then they, and they just send money or they show up and then say money. This is a mistake. This is a mistake not only in India but anywhere if you're doing it outside. So biggest thing to do is to, to say to yourself, okay, um, is this person an honest person when things go bad? You know, is this person who's going to do this? And how do you do that? You know, first, you spend time with them. Don't be jumping with whatever amount of money the first time you meet them. Secondly, ask people around, like ask other people. Third, their track record. Look at their track record. Fourth, look at if they have ever helped anybody else in their life. Like if you go to my LinkedIn, I don't think there's anybody who has over hundreds of people saying, you know, Snail has helped me. And then if you go to YouTube, there's hundreds of people who say, you know, I was here, I did this. Yes, I made mistakes, but you want to learn from successful people's mistakes and from their growth at the same time. So in this short time uh, that we have right now to, to finish this, bottom line is go where successful people are hanging out. So, you know, you're welcome to, I know it's still serving a little bit, but if you want to come to the event where I'm speaking, it's not an event that I'm producing. I'm a speaker there. Uh, come to these events. This, if, if I hadn't attended these events, I wouldn't be where I am today. Come to these events, meet people. And let's say there's 500 people in the room. You're going to find one or two that people that you're actually looking for. That's what you want to do. You don't want to do deal with 500 people. Or if you're in Mumbai, there's, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 brokers. You want to find that gold to work with. And, and, and that is going to be, if you attend events, that's going to speed up of locating these people faster because you will see people with track records. You'll see it. And of course, at the end of the day, your gut feeling has to be there. Don't be just like, oh, the return on investment is 20% or 30% and then blindly just jump in just okay. because numbers look good, you know? And, and what happens is when some people, when the numbers look good, they um, side swipe 
the idea, all the red uh, points of it or, or problems in into this, you know, so to so start from the point of view of that, uh, from point of view, relationships, relationship, relationship on the top, then location, 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 and the ROI and all that. That is beautiful. I think uh, um, I was, I was, I was under the impression somebody was going to say location is most important or ROI is most important. But I, I love the way that you're looking at this as relationships first, right? And uh, Sunil sir, I, I think um, we we are at time. This was such a wonderful, um, you know, an insightful session. I, I would call this as the masterclass uh, because this is this is what uh, what we kind of experienced ourselves. Uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, uh, a lot of people will find value in the generous insights that you've shared with us today. And we would hope to see you again, uh, you know, and maybe another episode uh, on the Indian Community Podcast. Uh, it, it is very difficult to find time on your calendar, but I'm sure uh, we'll we'll find you again very soon. And of course, uh, all the best for your upcoming tour and uh, the speaking session. So uh, we will be cheering for you uh, on behalf of the Indian community. So, uh, you know, we, we are very, very thankful. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome.